Welcome to the American Duchess Podcast. We want to give a shout out to Dandy Wellington for his generosity in letting us use his music, Greenhouse Stomp, in each episode. If you like his music, you can find Dandy on YouTube, Instagram, Spotify, and iTunes, as well as jazzing up the streets of New York City almost every night. All right, now let's get on with the show. And welcome to this week's episode of Quarantine Podcasting, <laughs> the American Duchess Quarantined Podcast. We're still in our homes. My dishwasher being in, at home just sang its little song telling us that it was done cleaning the dishes. <laughs> Mine does that too. <laughs> <laughs> want to give a quick shout out to Dandy Wellington for allowing us to use his music for our podcast because he is the best. If you want to find out more about Dandy, go to the description below if you're watching YouTube or listening to the podcast and we'll have links to all of his information there because he's amazing. Today, we are going to do another business related podcast because we have our like returning always business guests. <laughs> like Cindy's here, it's business. <laughs> this is time. Um, and we're going to be doing uh, a podcast today. We're just going to talk about what's been going on with these uh, small businesses in the historical costuming community, dealing with the virus and the pandemic and how we're dealing with it as a business, what developments have happened, what we've done as small businesses. But basically, I am here to say, Lauren and Cindy, let's put on those CEO hats and have a business meeting because <laughs> it's business time and I do have socks on. Uh, if for some reason you all are not familiar with Cynthia Secchi, she is the owner, founder, CEO, boss, redheaded maven, Slytherin queen of, <laughs> of course, it's a costume. And every time you're on here, it's always a good time, Cindy. So welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me again. And Lauren, just for those of you all watching at home who might not have understood this. Lauren and I don't live together, so. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the uh, third time I've, uh, no, well, I saw you last week for my birthday, but the, mm -hmm. like, third time I've seen you since all of this is broken up. <laughs> okay, let's just start at the very beginning, because it's a very good place to start. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Um, what, like March 5th or so? Yeah. <laughs> That, that yeah. dark moment. The, time, the day I got back from Spain. Yeah. I can't Somehow. believe you went into this like from a vacation. Oh, Abby did too. I know, both of yeah. you. You were like, hey, vacay. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, what actually happened is Lauren had been gone since February. So, yeah. And yeah. then she got back, and then the next day I left. So, we haven't actually seen each other for a, a like most of the year. The yeah. Last <laughs> Well, yeah. now, today is now, what, February 750, <laughs> so. <laughs> it's almost May. <laughs> I don't know what happened. March felt like it took an absolute year, and I don't know about you guys, but I feel like April has just. Yeah, finished. it's flown by. It's just like, whoa, wait, what? <laughs> it's April 28th today? <laughs> I, yeah, it's been very strange to uh, attempt to get and keep mm -hmm. any sort of bearings like yeah. on time or anything yeah yeah so, so we we popped back um we got back to the states on march 6th technically so we got home march 6th and at that time there wasn't like a stay at home order it wasn't being taken seriously in the states i went into work like everybody except abby because she went on vacation was into work and we were sort of like Huh. And we were actually watching what you were doing, Cynthia, because you were really on the first wave of people that were like, I'm going to do a stay at uh, a work at home for my employees. And so I was like, okay, Cynthia's doing it. Colorado was really progressive with that. And then about, I want to say it was a week later, but it might have yeah. been even less than that, that we were like, okay, everybody work from home, pack up your computers, get the phones installed, like, sayonara. Yeah, it, was like going in, <laughs> that's, it was that second week of March when things just got like, yeah. whoa. Because, and yeah. I had kind of seen that, I, you know, looking at what was going on in, in Italy and stuff, I was like, there, we are going to get locked down. For me, it was an, a logistics issue of like, I need to get people sewing machines in their houses. I need to get stuff like transferred places and it's going to take time. So I had this, I knew I had to start early because if I waited, we were going to have to do this insane scramble later. And also I was like, if any one of us gets sick, the business is screwed. You know, there's only a few of us making the stock. So, <sighs> Yeah. Well, you were super progressive about stocking up too. Like you saw issues with 
with just manufacturing and getting stuff. Supply. So you were, yeah. yeah, your supply, you were stocking up in supply, like, what was that, February? Yeah, like late you- January, I started putting in supply orders to hopefully get us through most of the year. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, our last big Cotille order, um, they shut before they shipped it to us. Ah. So, and I had a lot, um, but then people ordered a ton of kits which yeah. takes it. And so now I've had to close down kit ordering because I'm like, well, we need to make corsets. So I got to like hoard. Now I'm like yeah. a dragon hoarding the last bolts of Cotille in yeah. the US. I mean, we have a supply issue going on yeah. right now. We had a really big inventory at the end of last year, which is great because we had an awesome Christmas, but we got depleted out of our best stuff. So all the top sellers like Kensington's and Gibson's and Astoria's are pretty much sold out. And so we're hitting this like down season with not our best selling stuff, no way to restock it right now. And we've just done a a spring cleaning sale, which has been really awesome. Like it really saved our bacon and I can't thank people enough for participating in the sale. Um, We generated a lot of revenue that that buys us time, but it also depletes our inventory even more with no ability to restock. So it's, yeah. I'm laughing about it now so I don't cry because it's so frustrating. It was already a frustrating thing before yeah. COVID-19 because we're changing suppliers, at, changing countries for manufacturing and it's a big job. And so to put this on top of it is like, well, okay. Well, uh, yeah, like on one, on one hand, you know, if money wasn't an issue, it's almost kind of nice that you're in that transition now because it's like well the whole world is kind of paused and in transition but you need that cash flow that you don't have which it, it's tricky. a weird it's a very weird silver lining because yes we have the time now to really get the new production factories up and running without having to rush things because rush all, rushing always leads to mistakes and cutting at corners. At the same time, are the factories running right now? Are they um, Not working? all of them. No, yeah. some of them are. So we're doing prototyping, but like one of the Portuguese factories is closed. It was a bigger factory. The heel molds are getting made. Like it's, it's slow moving, but this is the, the tricky part is if we had the kind of demand in sales that we normally do, we'd be blowing through inventory, mm-hmm. you know, 10 times as quickly and running out and then not re- really not having anything to sell and no way to restock it. So the fact that the demand is down and we have time to, you know, get the new production line up and running is sort of this, I'm trying to look on the bright side, but at the same time, it's if the demand is too low, then we can't make enough money to pay people yeah well, yeah it was tricky i mean just to do social media this month because yesterday part of my morning was just spent going what do we even have in stock anymore it's <laughs> true yeah, yeah. Was like, it's oh, pretty low like because the sale did so well i was like okay yeah this one gets struck struck out struck out like okay yeah, this what do we even have to promote about. what do we have that we can sell that we can promote yeah yeah Book, books tricky. and patterns we've been yeah. doing through and i think you have too like oh yeah and patterns crazy yeah. yeah, crazy good. Patterns. I just put in another print order with our pattern printer because awesome. we're the flying out the door. But yeah, like Lauren, you and I both have an interesting thing with with the whole coronavirus, which is that people don't buy luxury items in a crisis. They certainly didn't in that first two weeks when things yeah really hit the fan. That's for sure. I think it it depends on the crisis. Um, yes. You and I both started in a recession. Yeah. We, we built and we did fine in the recession so long as events were going. That's the people, thing. If people don't have reasons to dress up, it's like, what? <laughs> yeah. why? And, it, and I used to joke too, of like, oh, we started a recession. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. It's like, well, what happens when all the theaters are closed? And what, what happens when all the events are canceled? The whole world is canceled. So nobody has any money. And it's just like, Oh, God. Yeah. When you watch yeah. pretty much every single one of your friends in theater lose their jobs in about a week. A, like, a, yeah. Oh, it was yeah. crazy. Um, we, and we didn't sell a corset for 10 days. No, 12 days. Whoa. 12 days in March. <sighs> Not a single one. And we usually sell multiple per day, of yeah. course. Like, you you know, doing the, the math on our employees and the size of our business, of course, we have to sell multiple corsets a day. Yeah. So that was like, oh, and I had someone call me and say, oh, it'll be fine. You know, you guys won't get sick. You'll probably be all right. And I'm like, hey, I haven't sold a corset in over a week. Oh. 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 Yeah. But it's picked back up a little bit now. I was going to yeah. say, it feels like in March, because every when it all happened and everyone kind of had their collective like, oh, no, moment. 
yeah everything stopped like everything became very still and quiet and everyone just held on to money but i feel like especially i mean like and our our numbers are kind of skewed by the sale because obviously the sale pushed a lot but it feels like buyer confidence is starting to come back a little bit and people are starting to feel a little bit more comfortable knowing that the end of the isolation is soonish and at least you know they at least have a sense of kind of what this is they've settled into Mm -hmm. it they've either unfortunately lost their jobs or they haven't or they figured out work from home those two weeks in the middle of march though were just such a big question mark for everybody i'm like of course people aren't buying like it makes sense i wouldn't be buying either (laughs) yeah so but i think like for us it's it's picked up um i mean we're nowhere near previous numbers but we're in less scary territory which is good a little bit more comfortable like i definitely feel the normalizing and then i worry about like if that's okay you know like is this the new normal i don't know is it all right to feel all right right now but i feel okay because we had a really 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 good april with the sale it's like That's what's awesome. may gonna look like what's june gonna look like june and july are usually our really really slow months anyway yep every year we call it the retail doldrums well, what's that gonna look like this year because it was already a struggle i don't know so I, i'm thankful i'm so so thankful that we had that sale that did so well. And then we also got some funding, the SBA PPP loan, and I had some credit lines and stuff. So I kind of did some like money magician things at the outset that I'm like, all right, we have this much runway before I have to react again. (laughs) I'm still waiting for those PPP funds. Yeah, yeah, that that was. Uh, <laughs> but at I, least the businesses, the other businesses are being shamed into giving the money back. Seriously, <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, I signed paperwork with PayPal, and we have. I got an email today, an update saying that we are in line for processing. So as long as we get processed, and I mean, I applied like as soon as the last funding dried up. I applied through PayPal again after all our local banks were like, no. Yeah. yeah. I got a phone call from one of them saying, oh. Uh, we're sorry, we missed your uh, application, didn't get to you. you know, let us know if there's anything we could do. I'm like, well, you could like process it. <laughs> and then I never heard back from them. So I'm like, okay, well. Yeah, dude. Yeah. It's, I feel s- very mixed emotions about the PPP because I feel sorry for the banks because they yeah. went into that with like no guidance at all. Yeah. And every one of them reacted differently and did different things. And I have to tip my hat to Umpqua Bank our local they I can't believe like how smoothly that went and I was very Good. frustrated the portal didn't work of course the morning that it opened I was up at eight o'clock like refresh 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 freaking out that was probably one of the most stressful days of my life <laughs> recently <laughs> anyway oh my word and that but they were good with communication good good with um you know, don't worry, you're in the queue, like um, an email every few days. And then we got the loan paperwork, which was the shortest yeah. loan work of all time. Seriously, I Holy went cow. for the DocuSign and I was like, that's it? This is like, like a page and a half. Like, I know. Wow. I'm like, <laughs> ah, this is a skeleton, but you know, got yeah. it signed, DocuSign. And then not very long after that, middle of the following week, we had the money in the account. So I feel really, really, really lucky and super thankful, even with its issues. I mean, there, there's definitely pitfalls in the PPP stuff of people that get counted and people that don't get counted and yeah. like the burden that that still puts on small business and on and on and on. I am really, really thankful to have that money to cover the payroll for two something months or so. Yeah. I mean, it's going to make a difference. Not a permanent solution, but no. it's, it buys more time. It does. And in a honestly pretty significant way, like I, I'm, I wasn't really expecting anything uh, on that level to get passed, honestly. <laughs> like, so that's good. I mean, it's got a lot of issues though. Yeah. I think in that two weeks at the beginning of this, when we all kind of lost our minds, the big question mark that you mentioned, Cynthia, I felt like it was, it was really, it was really, really rough because I didn't really believe that there would be any support at all. Yeah. Anything. So I went to PayPal and pulled all of our working capital, anything that was available 
before things took a nosedive. And yeah, and you suggested to me to do that too, and I really appreciate that because that was such a smart call. I went and did that with Shopify because they offer awesome. the similar thing. And so that's been really helpful. Like that covered kind of our downturn in March and April just to help get us through that. And those are based on algorithms. So real time for anybody listening, real time sales day to day. So let's say you have a big dip like a 75 to 90% drop in your sales that will affect your PayPal and your Shopify uh, loan that they can, that they'll offer you because it's generated by an algorithm. So we, I pulled ours when our figures were still at their highest, basically coming off of Christmas, which was awesome. So we got a lot of money that way. And then they delayed the um, pay repayment for 30 days and you can apply again too, if, if you still need help repaying because they take the money out of the incoming PayPal transactions every single day. 10, 20, or 30% you get to choose. For anybody who is a small business who might be listening to this and is has a PayPal payment system set up, you might check. Yeah, and you've been getting, getting the ads about working capital like over and over again every time you log in. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, yeah. <laughs> it's quite useful, honestly. It's, it's a really streamlined way to get some funding. Yeah, there's, a, there's fees associated with it, yeah. but it's not the same as like a credit card, a loan, or a line of credit at all. So I've been really, really happy with it. We've used PayPal Working Capital for a long time, multiple times. I think it's actually still running because I know that Cabbage American Express have frozen their small business loans. Oh, wow. You can't get those anymore. Whoa. Yeah. Cabbage is only, I think Cabbage is only processing PPP now is like kind of what they're. Cabbage is, is a front for Celtic Bank, which mm-hmm. is an SBA bank. It's who did our first SBA loan for American Duchess in 2014. So that makes sense. But they're not doing any of their lines of credit loans anymore. It's not the best kind of a high interest rate. Yeah, loan, I've looked it's... into it before and I was like, mm. and then I got yeah. a phone call like, hey, why didn't you go with us? And I was like, mm. They're very aggressive about that. It's not the best product, but it's been there for us when we've needed it. It was our first yeah. funding source way, way back when we were a little baby business. I mean, money talk, money talk with Cynthia and Lauren. Like, <laughs> you got to make money. Yeah. You got to spend it to make it. Yeah. yeah. It's nice. It's a nice idea to say like, oh, we'll just do everything on cash flow and pre-orders. And the fact is, is like, let's see, I think our th- third pre-order ever in 2011 did not self-fund. And that's when I I learned the lesson of like, okay, you know, it came up a little bit short and it's like, I'm going to make this happen with, it had to be cash flow back then to supplement the pre-orders. But later on it's okay, well, I've got 15 styles of shoes to order and I have a percentage of that in pre-orders, but almost never do our pre-orders self-fund anymore. So you have to make up the difference for big inventory orders in cash flow and funding. So if you think think about that, you would have to have, you know, with with your your markup and stuff, if if the pre-order was covering the entire order, you'd have very little inventory left. You know, a lot of it's just shipping out as a pre-order immediately. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. to have a larger inventory to to let that style continue for a year or two, yeah, you have to put that money in up front. It also works. doesn't cover things like payroll. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a complicated business, but when you're, when you're tiny and it's just you and you're living in your house and that's f- working out of your garage, it's fine. Like yeah. you don't have any overheads, then solely pre-order works. But yeah. inventory businesses, as you know, Cynthia, like they get so complicated so fast. They do. And <laughs> You, uh, the fastest way to find out if you're not charging enough is to hire someone oh to my do God, the work yes. for you. Because, <laughs> wow, that's, especially if you're doing a sewing business where you are specifically making the stuff yourself, like hire someone to do the job. And then when you realize you've paid them more than you charge for the thing, you're like, you're like oh, oh. Pro tip from Cynthia Sechi. Yeah. <laughs> that's like basic way back when red threaded, but like, yeah, that's a fast way to, to find out if you're pricing right. Yeah. Actually. And tallying up all the costs, all of them associated, awesome. credit card fees, shipping costs. Yeah, how much did you like, spend with uh, USPS last year? Oh, it was sixty to 80000 I think, just on postage. Not quite sure. We're Maybe keeping them alive. It's good. <laughs> I'm not going to go down that hole no, right now. No, <laughs> no it's That's a very we're doing our, hole. <laughs> we're doing our part. We yeah, that. No, very, we're very, very, very pro USPS for anybody listening to this. And if you don't yeah. like that, you could just stop listening right now. <laughs>
on that note. <laughs> um, so Cynthia, you were super, super fast on it. Like what have you done to help streamline costs for Red Threaded to make sure that it can like bat down the hatches and weather this storm? Like what have you done? I'm, well, luckily I had already bought all the supplies in the land. So like that... <laughs> Bill is like, like all of this all the bones and the busks and the yeah no really like I have a horde of stuff so that cost has happened like I have paid for all of that I know I'm not gonna have to or order much of that in which is kind of nice because now my main expenses are rent and payroll uh rent for the studio space so one thing I'm doing and I had a lot of people who are like wait, why are you doing this already? This seems really like premature. Uh, but we are trying to downsize our studio space because about two or three years ago, I expanded and yeah. I basically doubled our space, adjoining room that we could move into. So we have about 1400 square feet right now, but we worked in the first room for several years. And I know that that space works, especially now that all the inventory is up here with me hey, it turns out that takes up a lot of room. I am currently trying to get that other half rented out. My landlady actually called me and said, hey, are you okay? Because nice. all, all the theaters are closed, right? Yeah, Thank they, they are. It's true. So we're trying to get a tenant in there. I mean, I'm not budgeting for it to get rented because I'm very skeptical that it will right now unless there's someone who's in a larger space somewhere who needs to downsize into say 700 square feet in Louisville Colorado with lovely laminate floors that I installed <laughs> it's sort of a lateral move because eventually I do want to move the business fully up to the town I now live in because right now I'm commuting or well, I was commuting about half an hour back mm -hmm. and forth and I like this town and there's a lot of cute potential commercial spots so moving out of one of the units into just one is kind of useful in that way anyway yeah, nice. and hey if we can get it rented out that's awesome that cuts my rent in half which would be great. So that's kind of the big one. I am very blessed to have several employees who say don't necessarily need the income to survive. You know, they they are supported also, and several of them have kids at home now. Mm. So they're, they are voluntarily taking reduced hours because they're like, I can't sew at ho at this much at home with my kid and teach them kindergarten. Oh my God. Mm. <laughs> so that's kind of knocking down our, our costs a little bit right now. I mean, I would love to get them back up to full time like not some of them are part-time I'd love to get them back up to their full hours but in the the logistics of their lives right now that actually doesn't make sense and you're working on your YouTube channel too so the other thing that both of the companies have done is turn and go media cost yeah. saving we didn't really save costs I didn't really slash anything except advertising yeah I went and looked at my cash flow projection and like what could reasonably be paired back yeah biggest expense that we have of anything is purchasing inventory and we haven't yeah. done any of that this year so yeah. we've had some development costs um but the, i've reordered nothing except small products like books patterns and shoe care stuff mm -hmm. slashed advertising but that's it like it's more like we have these costs we got to figure out a way to make make up the difference you know i paid rent today our landlord didn't call us doesn't give a shit it's like here's the bill and it's gone up so i'm like cool uh, all right i wasn't expecting anything you know anything generous but you know it's still five and a half fifty six hundred dollars a month that has yeah. to be paid i still pay the payroll i cut my salary right at the beginning um aside from that we haven't laid anybody off. We got the PVP, so nobody's getting laid off. We just haven't ordered any inventory, which is, to go back to the beginning of this podcast, has its own issues. Right. But, you know, we crossed that bridge too. <laughs> Later. <laughs> Later. Have you, I was curious, have you had any theatrical orders lately? I'm wondering if anyone took up the sale for like theaters I don't in a, like future know. kind of way like if um, anyone's planning I'd have to go and look yeah I don't I don't see the individual orders I anymore yeah. members yeah. like Nicole mentioning that I think like right when they announced Broadway was going to go dark 
that there were still some theater orders going coming in kind of like well yeah. with that whole mindset of like okay yeah well we're not showing but we're still developing shows so it's like not a big mm. deal and oh, then yeah. I think when it was like no 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 sorry hold on let us clarify nothing <laughs> yeah no, we had a <laughs> really big order theatrical go out just before this happened and I never checked to see if any of it came all of it came back because it's too heartrending yes when that happens so i i've hired enough people to like put up a Buffer. wall between me yeah. and the painful stuff <laughs> <laughs> i don't have to like look at it anymore because it i i take everything way too personally like everything <laughs> <laughs> like more aggressively than what we were doing before because you had started a youtube channel like what was it, about a year or so yeah it's been a year and, like we've been growing ours like slowly and like 2020 yes. was the year of youtube anyways but now it's like it's like oh it's the year of youtube it's like the year of youtube I know. <laughs> so but you switched over and doing to doing that as well yeah I, it wasn't with an aim of like i need to monetize youtube or something i was mm -hmm. just like i need to stay current and I need to stay in people's minds. I need to remind them that the business exists so that when they're more stable and, you know, bored and want to make a dress but don't have the corset, they know who to go find. And I also kind of wanted to just entertain people a little bit. So hopefully my ridiculous shed series is doing that. I don't know. Uh, I enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> have you noticed good feedback from people who have, yeah. who've gone to the YouTube and like have a, have responded well to it yeah I've actually gotten a lot more views and comments and positive response than I was expecting our YouTube has just gone sh now a lot of that is because of the Sony project that we did so that I mean I didn't think that that video would have that many views that quickly I mean I knew it was going to be big but I didn't think it would be that big yeah. a lot of that is thanks to my co Meg March sisters who have larger YouTube followings than I do so Angela yeah. Clayton and Rachel Maxey like they sent us a ton of viewership and it was great and that actually is what got us monetized I was gonna so. say that's what got you monetized yeah wasn't it? Which is great. I've made seven dollars yes yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Save us all. Empire. Yeah. How do you, um, our Patreon has grown, gone up, and I've noticed that. Yeah. So I didn't know if it was the same for you, but yeah. when this all happened, there was a lot of discussion about expecting Patreon to kind of dip down. Like I was, I was. Oh no. Expecting Patreon to go. But it's, uh, it's gone. Pew. <laughs> yeah, ours has gone up a lot. I mean, I mine wasn't big at all to start with. Mm -hmm. I just haven't had the time to put into it as much and promoting it as much. But what I'm noticing is that people are actually sending us messages like, hey, I'm joining just because I want to support Red Threaded through this time. And I'm like, oh my God, you guys are going to like make me cry. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, the support from the community has been really yeah. awesome. Incredible. Yeah. What's interesting is that I because I was looking at some numbers right before this our order value is down about 50 percent over the like April and March over February's order value but our order number is actually way up so right. a lot of people are buying smaller things because that's what they can afford to do but they like want to help or they want to get a pattern or they're you know they're buying a t-shirt just to it's, it's awesome like that's so cool you guys all rock yeah <laughs> definitely what about the future since we don't vend at events it's never been like as big of an issue for us you know people will buy for events or maybe they buy after an event but they we don't since we don't sell at events it's never had the quite the direct effect over us but now the big events for costuming have been postponed or canceled for 2020 that's now the next hurdle for everyone to figure out i don't know it's weird because i had already decided to take a step back this year Last mm -hmm. The last two and a half years, honestly, I have been going absolutely nonstop. I think I was in a hotel 50 days of last year, oh like God. for business, <laughs> just for business. No more of that. I had already decided that I needed to pare life like way down and get back to some basics and not travel as much. So it's kind of weird timing with that. Like, did I see this coming? Like, what the? No, I did not. But like costume college being canceled is a big one for us. We'd already decided we were not going to Jane Austen Festival. Honestly, doing that back to back last year 
because last year was our first year at Costume College. And last year I had this feeling like I need to go this year. It needs to happen this year. It needs to happen in 2019. I don't know why, but we need to get there. And it was great. We did 10% of our annual gross revenue in two days. So that's worth it. That's worth hauling some corsets across the country. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So now we're looking at that revenue pretty much, I'm assuming, going away. I mean, there will be people who buy stuff, but there won't be people buying stuff for Costume College. The way I'm looking at the PPP loan, should we get it, is what we are approved for is essentially that amount. So that's kind of a nice little like, okay, that, that kind of helps slot in some of that. It's very weird to not have any vending plans at all. I'm not going anywhere ever again, I guess. <laughs> it's, just very, it's very weird because for years I've had, you know, like five or six flights booked, like in my future, you know, I log on to Southwest now. It's like, I'm not going anywhere. I feel for the people who do rely on events so specifically, you know, we have a huge online presence. We'll be okay. But the vendors who do like the con circuit and stuff mm -hmm. like that, oh my God, what an awful time for them. So I hope they're, I hope they're finding some assistance that helps them get Otherwise. through that because. Whew, yeah. Yeah. But. Luckily it's, I mean, setting up an e-commerce site is, is easier than it's ever been. Yes. So I'm, I hope that, that people are plugging away on that and then making their goods available to people online because I mean, the, the word on the street in non-niche businesses is online shopping is way up obviously one of my mentors is like oh you sell online you should be doing great i'm like did you cat not catch the part where all the events are canceled and all the theaters are closed like and tv and film like yeah um i'm a little worried about the fallout moving forward because we don't know when this is going to end or when events are going to start yep. again if it's a really long time it's you know how many pairs of shoes will people reasonably buy without any reason to wear them I, yeah. I'm scared. I agree. I mean, yeah. I'm kind of thinking that events aren't a thing for the rest of this year. So that's tricky. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we, I, that's, one, that's my next kind of hurdle to figure out. You know, I've kind of like, okay, we've gotten us through the, the initial thing. What's next? So we'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Cindy, for joining us uh, on this episode and sharing your experience. I hope for everyone listening at home that this has kind of helped flesh out some more of the picture uh, of what your favorite costuming businesses and small businesses are doing at this point in time. Uh, so we're almost hopefully towards the end of at least this round. So thank you all so much for your support. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Thank you for watching on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, don't forget to subscribe, whether you're listening or watching because it's the same. <laughs> and uh, we will see you all next time. And yeah. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this episode of the American Duchess podcast. We hope that you enjoyed this episode as much as we did. If you didn't already know, we're on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter, All American Duchess. Our blog is blog.americanduchess.com, and our website is www.americanduchess.com. You'll find the links to all of these in the description below, including links to our guests' website and social media. Until next time! Time and time.